In lab, we investigated the amount of work it took to stretch a spring. And what was cool about that is when you do work to stretch a spring, the force that you exert changes in proportion to the length that the spring is stretched or compressed if the spring worked the other way. So you created a graph of force over here and you were pulling along the same direction you were moving versus distance over here. And usually we give the symbol x for distance, right? And so this graph shows work over distance, and we know that the area under this graph, or sorry, force versus distance, we know the area under this graph is work. So the work is equal to the area. Now, since this is a straight line, we were able to directly relate the force to the distance the spring stretched. We were able to say F is equal to K times X. And this is the force that you exerted, where K is the spring constant. Okay? And each spring has its own constant. It depends on uh, the stiffness of the spring. Basically, the higher that constant, the harder it is to stretch or compress that spring. And that's measured in newtons per meter. Um, now, the spring exerts an equal force back on you when you do this work, so the force the spring exerts is equal to the opposite of k times x, where x is the distance you've pulled the spring, or squished it if it was a compressing spring. Now, uh, this is called Hooke's Law, or the spring constant, and so uh, we can figure out how much force it takes to pull a string a given length, and that's actually the basis for a spring scale, right? We hang something off of it, and based on how far it stretches, we know how much it weighs or how much force uh, has to be exerted to balance the force due to gravity. But let's get back to this. Work equals the area under this curve. Well, the area is this triangle, right? So if we pulled it this many meters or centimeters, whatever it is, x, uh, then we have done the work under this curve. And that area is a triangle, so it's half the base times the height. Well, the base is easy, because from here we can see that it's x. But the height is a function of x, right? So the force is actually equal to the height is actually equal to the force at x, uh, and that is given by kx. Okay, so I'm going to replace the height with kx. I still have my half, and so that means this work that you did to stretch this spring is equal to one half the spring constant times the distance you stretched it squared, or one half kx squared. That is the work that you did to stretch the spring. So this is the work exerted, if you will. Um, now, if that was it, then there would be some net work done. But the force of the spring was opposite of that. And so the spring would have done the negative amount of work, uh, negative one-half kx squared. So the total work done is zero, but you still did some work. And that means you actually transferred energy because one definition of work is the transfer of energy. Now, if we look at the unit for one-half kx squared, uh, k is newtons per meter times x, which is meters squared, uh, and we can see that square cancels that meter, and we are left with newton meters, and this is a joule, right? So we know that the work done to stretch a spring is measured in joules, and joules also measure energy. So work is the transfer of energy, and when you did work on the spring to stretch it, your work is stored now in the spring as what we call potential energy. Now, potential energy is energy that is associated with an object's position uh, or shape relative to something else or some other force. We think of it as stored energy. Okay? So potential energy is stored which means it is still able to do some work, right? So that spring can pull back and exert a force through a distance and transfer that energy to something else and do work on some other object. So uh, Hooke's Law allows us to calculate the force uh, in a stretch spring or to stretch a spring and in turn allows us to figure out how much work must be done to stretch a spring and how much potential energy is then stored in the spring.